So as someone that edits all of my content, the number one question that I get from new viewers is what do I use to edit my own videos? And if you have been subscribed, you know I use DaVinci Resolve. And today, lucky for you guys, I'm gonna be explaining how I actually edit my videos from start to finish. This will either help you guys improve your existing knowledge of DaVinci Resolve or learn how to use the software itself. And trust me, the last tip that I give in this video is game changing and almost no one talks about so it. So make sure to stick around for that. But with all that out the way, let's get right into it. All right, so the first step of this process is to actually install DaVinci Resolve and this could be easily done by literally just going to their website I'll have the link down below in the description click on free download now you just put in your information download it for free so you can do that if you don't have it already installed but if you have it already installed I'll catch you inside the software in a second all right so the first thing we're gonna do once we have DaVinci Resolve booted up is we're gonna start up a new project and what we're gonna do is we're gonna name whatever so I'm gonna do sample tutorial August or something like that and I'll just press enter on my keyboard to create that project then I'm gonna go on over here to the edit tab the edit tab is where we're going to be doing everything and then we're going to go on over to this rocket ship at the very 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 end of the video so right when we start off we want to initialize our project settings and that's the way that our video is going to be presented when we actually render that final product so then what we're going to do is we're going to go to file project settings we're going to change this to 60 fps if you want your video to be 60 fps if not you can change it to 30 and you are just going to leave your resolution as is press save from there what i'm going to do is i'm going to find the footage so what i actually did is i came up with a video right here and i just cut some stuff up and put it together for the sake of this video so i have this little footage here for you guys it would obviously be different like you'd have your own recordings that you're dragging in individually and then you put them all together but for me I just have one video here and that's going to be the sample footage that we're going to be using working a nine to five job can be challenging and mentally exhausting Dealing the one disclaimer i will let you guys know right off the bat before i actually edit this at all is that it's already cut up but i'm going to show you how to do your cuts actually in a second so let me quickly show you guys an example of how you can cut so the blade tool can be easily accessed by clicking on this button here or you can press b on your keyboard to switch between the two um a is the main select tool b is the blade tool and that's just like how you you switch back and forth so obviously if you had a recording and you had dead space let's say there's some dead space here the thing about davinci when you're not talking we can see that in between words there are like these small little gaps here obviously if you have dead space it's going to be a lot larger you just need to come through and click on either side of the dead space so imagine there's no talking here that's gonna be your dead space all you got to do is use your blade tool click on the layer then literally just click on it delete it's that simple and then to bring your clip over you can either ripple delete by pressing shift delete and it automatically brings it over or you can delete it click on the space in the middle press delete again either or works up to you guys so that's actually how you cut up your footage in the way that i actually do it from there i'm going to show you guys how i actually use b-roll footage so for example in my intro what i will do we can see that there's a cut right here so for example i'm just going to cut the footage where there are actual breaks in the video itself just so we can actually use this as a reference so we can see that off the bat it says working, working a nine, nine to five, five job can be challenging, challenging and, mentally exhausting. and mentally exhausting so what i'm gonna do is i am going to utilize b-roll footage from here to here and we can use uh markers to actually outline that so that's gonna just be m on our keyboard m for marker and then this is gonna be our talking portion here where i'll show you guys how to do slow zooms so um we've all been there and you might be all right so i got my markers laid out this is gonna be the little sample portion that we use just literally these little the 10 seconds of footage right here my number one tip for you guys if you want to use stock footage literally go to pexels.com it's 100% free and you can just look up like office working something like that changes to videos search it and we have people working right here so i'm just going to download this call it whatever save it to wherever let it download and then what i'll also do is i'll grab another thing of stress because if you're utilizing stock footage in your videos all you have to do is literally just line it up with whatever you're saying so for me here we go we got the office clip here we got the other video right here and it's so so simple trust me when i say this just literally drag it over top cut out your marker then the second clip has audio to get rid of it all you have to do is right click on it unlink clips delete it boom and we're gonna line that up with our second set of markers so so far our video looks like this mentally exhausting dealing with customers and toll on you. we've all been there and you might be fed up with your life right now. 
that's pretty much that. So um, that's how you implement B-roll footage. It doesn't have to be stock footage, but stock footage is just my example that I use for all my videos. It could be secondary footage. It could be a second camera angle. Doesn't have to be stock footage, but if you want it to be stock footage, just go to Pexels. I'll have that link down below in the description. The next thing I'm going to be showing you guys is slow zoom. Slow zooms is one of the most important things when it comes to retention. Whenever you are just talking, looking at the camera, put in a slow zoom, put in a slow zoom out. It doesn't matter. You can, I, you have two options for this. So you can start at something like 1.1 and have it look like a zoom like this, where it's zooming out. Or what you can do is you can do the complete opposite. You can start it at one and have it progressively zoom in. Dealing with I personally like zoom ins because I feel like they look better, but also zoom outs can look really good. So let me just quickly go over that slower for you guys, just so you can actually pick up on how to do this. So when the talking clip first starts, we're going to click on the layer. We're going to come up here to the transform tab. If you don't have the transform and your thing looks like this, click on inspector and it will pop up the tab. Keyframe using this little button here to keyframe on one, come over here and change your zoom to 1.1 and it'll be the exact opposite for the zoom out. So Dealing with we can see it does a little zoom in here. It's looking really we good. Help. And again, if we wanted to do the opposite, what we would do is we do 1.1 keyframe it then come over here to one and it automatically Decisions keyframes and we change the value. So it does like a little zoom out right here. And that's pretty much how you do that. I mean, uh, what keyframing is, is you could imagine one side there's a value, another side there's a value and between it progressively changes between the two. So that's what causes the zoom to actually happen. So the next thing I'm going to be talking about is subtitling, super basic. I'm going to have a subtitle video coming out in the next few days so stay tuned for that um so i'm gonna just go over it like from a surface level almost pretty much all you need to do is come over here to your titles tab in your effects library again if you don't have the effects library click on effects you can see the titles thing right here all you got to do is drag a text thing over and from there what you can do is you can literally select any font you want i have a lot of like fonts that i've downloaded so if you want any of these fonts that you see in this video just do that so i'm just gonna do working because we say working a nine to five job they're just typing in the box right here and then davinci also offers for you to like actually add your own drop shadow in the software itself and i don't like this drop shadow so i'm gonna do negative four to make it. yeah that's like the subtitle there obviously what you do for subtitles is you'd have it changing every word so you would have a nine to f a nine it would be like this uh nine to five to five job and by the way if you without copy pasting without using Control c Control v if you press alt on your keyboard and click on a layer and drag it over it just like does the exact same thing and working a nine to five job challenging and that's pretty much how you do subtitles on a basic level so that's how you do that and moving on from there what we have is we have transitions so i'll show you how to do transitions quickly we're going to do music that is pretty much going to be it so so for transitions what we got to do is come over here to our effects library again we're going to go to adjustment clip but quickly we're going to make sure that our markers lined up with the actual end of the clip. So we can see our stock footage ends there. Or your B-roll, your secondary footage, whatever. It doesn't have to always be uh, with B-roll, obviously. So uh, you can add transition wherever you want. Obviously, transitioning between two different things of footage. So I'm gonna drag in an adjustment clip. When we get the adjustment clip in, it's a lot bigger than it should be. So we can switch to our blade tool again using B and just delete that excess off. Leaves you with something like this. You want the middle of the clip to be kind of lined up with that marker, something like that. So we're gonna go into our fusion tab, which is the fourth tab here at the the very bottom and i have transition presets down below in the description for you guys to download so go into the davinci folder drag in whatever you want i'm going to be using swipe right as an example because i like uh directional up down left right type things but there's other rotate ones and stuff there in the drive if you want to download those and you're literally just going to drag it in from your file explorer to here and you can either click on it press shift at the same time and drop it in there and make it part of this layer or what you can do is you can manually connect this line just like that either works completely up to you guys uh but yeah that's how you do that and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this uh keyframe menu here we're gonna press this little arrow thing here we can see these little white dashes right here is where the keyframes for the transitions are so we just need to drag that over to the left roughly around where our red playhead is press the arrow thing to zoom in it again we can see that we did miss it so we're just gonna click and hold and select these and then drag these over so i need to go back to where the marker is because that's our keyframe uh, transition point and I am going to line up this third keyframe so we can see if I move them over we can see there's one two three four keyframes here in total we're gonna line up this third one with the red playhead and exhausting dealing with customers exhausting. you can't dealing see it I gotta change it to quarter as completely light dealing with exhausting dealing with exhausting 
exhausting. Dealing that's transition right there. Super easy, super basic. Beginners can do it. And that's how you do transitions. And literally, if you wanted to, you can go like this. Drag it over to the other one. On We've all been super easy. And obviously, I would recommend switching up transitions for different things. That way, you don't have the same repetitive transition going over and over again. Uh, but yeah, that is how you do that. And then lastly, we're going to move on to music. So I have Epidemic Sound. I highly recommend that you pick it up if you are a YouTuber, you want to make good videos because there are like a ton of um, because there are like a ton of great videos. If you end up downloading a clip from Epidemic Sound, you use it in your videos, you're going to get copyright strikes. So you have to register your Google account with them in order to not get copyright strike when you use their content. So that is pretty much that. I'm just going to drag in some sort of sound. And I believe this is like a good dramatic one. Hold on. A nine to five job can... Had to put my headset on for this one. Job can be challenging and meant... So this isn't like an insanely good example, but I'm going to skip on over to where like it starts i'm gonna cut it at the end turn it down more to like maybe like 20. Job can be it's honestly it's good enough for a sample video but yeah that is how you actually implement music into your videos it's super simple you literally just need to drag and drop and what i did to turn it down is i literally clicked on this line and i dragged it super simple or what you can do is you can click on the layer click on the layer Go over here to volume, type in like negative 24 decibels. Working a nine to five. And obviously the lower the number, the quieter the audio is going to be. So that's how you actually do that. That is how you make YouTube videos. All that's left to do from there. Imagine instead of a little 10 second clip right here, you kept on repeating the process with your entire video. You were doing stock footage. You're doing your zooms, transitions, subtitles. All you got to do from there, let's say it's like a 10 minute video. Go over here to your delivery tab. And then what you do is you type in like final sample project blah blah something like, like literally could be whatever then you go to browse save it wherever you want so for me it'd be my youtube videos folder and then you literally just change this to constant bit rate or whatever add to render queue click on render and then it actually shows up in the folder that you selected and you can just directly upload it to youtube but that's actually going to conclude the video guys if you guys did enjoy you learned something make sure to actually subscribe like and comment i'm interested to know what tips from this video you're going to be using in your video so make sure to let me know down below which one you're going to be using first good luck on your youtube journey